this is going to be awesome. And and you are, I can't remember. It's been so long. <laughs> But gang, tonight on this version of Tuesday Night with Ben Still, we are going to be kind of dealing with a question that I've gotten, and I'm sure you get an awful lot too. That you guys have seen some of our videos where we've talked about the different lines of EV speakers. Now, there's different lines of speakers with a lot of different manufacturers, and we are, as truth be told, we're a little particular because we love our EVs. Because they do a nice job. They've got different speakers, though, for different kind of applications, I think is a way to describe it. And let's try to give people tonight a little bit of a maybe a rule of thumb or suggestion maybe of which ones because we have got three lines we've got the zlx over here behind me you guys can see that and we got the ekx which was now this was the 2014 Four, 15? 15 or 14. I think it's 15. 15. And then yeah, 15 2000, we have the ETX down, and that was the 2014. So you've got three of the most modern lines from EV that DJs should know about or DJs should be using. So mm -hmm. let's kind of give people an idea of what each one, you know, what kind of applications they would work well for. Sure. Well, uh, first, uh, you know, John, we, we love our EVs, but we're not alone. Uh, you know, now for the last three or four years, EV's been the number one selling loudspeaker in terms of total units sold. Uh, and now uh, in this last year, they also became the number one selling loudspeaker in terms of dollars sold. Yeah. So EV is really the undisputed heavyweight champion of portable loudspeaker sales right now. And uh, and that's because a lot of people love them like we do. Heck, the thousand plus people in that room right next door listening to the EV rig at Mobile Beat, uh, they love it. They can uh, attest yeah. to it. Yeah. Our phones were, were blowing up last night as uh, Redfoo uh, was doing his thing. And the concert was going on, and people were like, "OMG, this EV rig is ridiculous!" And you know, yeah. and, so and that at, at the show is that hasn't always been the case that that they're saying how great the sound system is. I mean, there've been times where the next day we're like, "Yeah, they blew up this sub, or they blew that up, or they couldn't handle it." Uh, EV is definitely showing people why they're the choice of of. Uh, well, why they're the number one choice in yeah. the United States. So. Really, really, they have been. So, so let's start. Let's, yeah, let's get into the meat and potatoes. Yeah, yeah. We're going to move the camera a little bit so we can be more centered on our ZLX, and let's kind of talk about what they can do. So I'll move the camera. So, Ben, we've got the ZLX series. Now, this has been one series of speakers that I've heard people talk about. Mm -hmm. And and they're the what Evie would consider their entry-level yeah. speakers. They're the beginning of the line. Uh, I think that's what's really remarkable about them, truly, is that, that they are an entry-level speaker. And, and they have an entry level price point, uh, but they really perform well. I mean, the, the, the sonic difference is clear when you listen to the lines, and obviously that's what we've got in our demo room is the ability for people to listen and choose what the appropriate solution for them is. Right. You, know, you definitely do hear that step up. Uh, in the EV line, but if you take this against other other entry level speakers, it it really stands apart. And the thing that really I think amazes me the most, uh, and I'm going to try to say this delicately, but it's it's sort of a statement of fact. Typically, uh, the entry level speakers uh, go to people who have to be very cautious about what they spend. Maybe they're just starting out, and and maybe they uh, don't have as much. Uh, knowledge to go with it either right so you take someone who's uh you know fairly new to audio principles and takes a speaker and then tries to make it do something maybe it wasn't really designed for uh and yet the, the failure rate on these is almost non-existent we yeah. have virtually no failures we've had a, a handful uh and, and for the amount uh, the number of units that have been sold that's really oh incredible. staggering uh, and i'll tell you what th this this i can set in the in the you know uh, lens of you know, quantification here that we sell a lot of different brands, and I and I look at the failure rates for the other brands entry level speakers that we sell, and it's it's staggeringly higher. And that that to me is to say, wow, they've built a very robust box that actually sounds fairly decent, uh, and is incredibly uh, aggressively priced. So now, if I were you mentioned, of course, as kind of a, a beginner starting out, these are a great great cabinet for that. Mm -hmm. Now, what kind of a, of events? Now, if I'm looking for you know, obviously a large teen dance, we've had the discussions that. This isn't, if you're doing a thousand kids, not the box for you. But what kind of events could a mobile DJ really feel confident using this line? Well, these are great for, for uh, weddings, corporate work. Uh, they're very lightweight, very easy to carry. We've done some fun uh, videos on that, on the three-handle design and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they're they're good for your your meat and potatoes. Fantastic for karaoke gigs. Uh, you know, uh, smaller bar gigs. Anywhere you really don't need a ton of push. 
uh, you know, again, uh, for you know, musicality and whatnot, uh, the EKX, which you know, I know we're going to talk about in a minute here, is is sonically much better. Uh, but these are mind-blowingly good, uh, especially for what they cost. Yeah. Yeah, that was when we did that, uh, when Mike came in and he brought all four lines in for us. And we went you know, one, two, three, four. And you can definitely tell there's a difference, but it wasn't a a huge difference. I think it was right. probably the thing that really got, that, that stood out to me is that, yes, you could tell. Yeah. But, you know. There should be a difference. You're paying more money. There should be a reason. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know? yeah, but you would think there was more of a, <laughs> more of a difference. In there. Well, I think I, I hear more of a difference. I think you know I you know again I'm like that's not to knock any of them. A guy asked me yesterday. He said, "Well, how do you, you know, give me give me the Reader's Digest version. Just sum it up for me." And of obviously, course, he knew you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> said, well, Before you answer, excuse me. <laughs> let's have a seat. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I tried to give him a, a kind of a summary, and and because you know, working from left to right, we've got uh, you know, good, better, best. We've got ZLX, EKX, and then ETX, which is I, I finally say the weapons grade. Uh, and, uh, and, and by the way, it's really fun uh, how many uh, folks have come in this room and said, oh, I saw your video and I bought ETX. So uh, <laughs> I have to tell Evie, and we need some royalty money, you know. But <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, I said, well, it's like this. It's like, it's like going to the Ford dealership and, you know, you, you get your Ford Focus and then you get your Mustang GTO. I mean, you know, there's, yep. they're both made by Ford. They're both, you know, good cars, whatever, but you're, you're going to have some performance difference, you're, you, you know, and, and that's that. So. Yeah. So ZLX is our entry level. Let's go over to the EKX next. So we're stepping up in line. We are now looking at our good, better, best. Yeah. We've got the the EKX here, mm -hmm. which of course this is this is a line that I've actually had some experience out mm -hmm. using it in the field and such, using the subs and the tops. Mm -hmm. Kind of give us a little a little your impressions now, because we talked a little bit about you know the the popularity and things. Mm -hmm. What have you what have you been experiencing from you, the customers? Well, uh, n not only what we're hearing from the customers, but what I what I uh, you know believe myself. This is my favorite line. Now that's not to say that it's the best. Uh, unequivocally, ETX is better than EKX. So I'll tell you why this is my favorite line, because this the EKX is an incredible value. It's an incredible bang for the buck. Uh, you know, we we move up from a composite box to a wood box. They're 15 millimeter birch. Uh, they have amplifiers. Uh, well, let's just, let's stop right there. All right, because I want you to not get too geeky on me. Notice, oh. I, notice I'm setting the stage here but why is that important to me why would it be important that I'm moving from a, a composite box to what well the uh, the more rigid the box and the denser the structure it's going to change the acoustic properties of the box it's going to give us uh, more warmth it's going to give us more push uh, and and uh, important to note too kind of sidebar it's not just that it's a wood box it's a it's a Baltic birch plywood box okay and so plywood of course has layers and again gives us stiffness rigidity uh, it's all about cabinet design and so we're coming from you know a composite box which is uh, you know a plastic type material uh, up into not just a wood box like MDF or something but actually a birch plywood box at 15 millimeter uh, this is really built like a much more expensive box and that's why this is my favorite uh, you yeah. know why, why I think it's a tremendous bang for the buck because it's priced right in the meat of where the most loudspeaker purchases for DJs are price wise it's right in the in the the sweet spot if you will yeah. uh, for what is a is a fantastic value uh, and yet it outperforms that price point uh, by so much it's so difficult when people ask to compare it to other speakers and its price point because uh, you know we're dealers for all of them and and we want to try to be fair but we also we want to be honest and we kind of go well it doesn't really belong in that price point it just happens to be in that price point it makes it a good value for you but it's hard you know with hard to compare it to the, some of the competitors without saying bad things about them and we don't want to do that mm -hmm. so uh, you know some of the features that, that we could point to uh, would be of course uh, you know uh, a versatility of inputs we've got a, a stereo unbalanced RCA input we could just take directly from a, a iPhone a little split out cable yeah. or whatever uh, we've got uh, quarter inch and XLR cables a small little mini mixer built in we have a, a fairly well featured DS not as robust as ETX, but again, price and performance difference. Uh, Fan-cooled amplifiers. A uh, guy who lives here in Vegas was asking me yesterday how I thought these would do out in the sun. I said, just take the Pepsi Challenge. I don't know. You know give it a whirl. I feel pretty good about it. I know what EV does to these things. You've, yeah. you've seen there. what they do. Yeah. I said, yeah, I, I think it'll be fine. Uh, 
anyway, uh, lightweight amplifier, 1500 watts of power, uh, and uh, I think they come out about 132 dB or something. Uh, they, yeah. It's a lot of output, and they sound great. We had a musician in here yesterday, a guy with great ears, trained ears, who uh, just could not stop. I think he literally was in this room for three hours. L literally. He, he could not stop mm. <laughs> listening to them. Uh, so yeah, I, I think they've, they've just delivered in spades. Yeah, I think so. I've, I've been very, very happy with using the 12 or the 15. So I ended up getting both of them. And really, it, it's one of those things that they just work and work really, really well. Mm -hmm. So now they come, it, let's, let's kind of now. And so far, in the failure count, now these have only been out since uh, about two years, I think. Now, uh, was it NAM last year? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, so it's hard to remember because you know I, I know these things are coming two years in advance. Exactly. So it's hard for me to remember when they hit the street. Anyway, uh, I, I would have to check with our office to get an absolute answer. But off the top of my mind, and I'm pretty tuned into my customers, I don't know of a single failure. I don't know of a single EKX failure yet. Yeah. So I'm sure there, I'm sure one's out there. The, the, but I don't know of one. UPS has got to drop one eventually. Well, but that's not a failure. Yeah, that's you true. know, I mean, <laughs> pushing it off a cliff doesn't mean the loudspeaker failed. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's you know? true. Just made it work, but that could be used. UPS. So we've got the 12, you've got the 15. We also have there's a 15 inch sub and an 18 inch sub. Mm -hmm. So now let's kind of let's look at the the kind of sets because when when we've listened to these, these two go together and these two go together. Yep. The 15 and the 18, the 12 and the 15. Yep. Applications. Well, and you can use the 12 with the 18 too. You know, the 12 is voiced really well. You're going to get a, a deeper, uh, harder hitting bass from the 18, just and a little more push. Set the DSP. You can choose that sub, which is a really cool feature. It's beautiful. So easy. It's, uh, it's, yeah. yeah. Who needs sound guys anymore, I guess, right? But <laughs> yeah. they're just going to pick an option and. It gets obsolete. Yeah, that's why I have to go off and work tours now, just so I can find some relevancy, you know. But uh, anyway, uh, so <laughs> DJs don't need me anymore. Uh, uh, in terms of application, here again, we just we would basically take it up a notch. Particularly when you add subs, the uh, the amount of people you can cover goes up dramatically because we're shifting the workload from the top, uh, and we're sharing that with the sub. Uh, these high high frequency drivers go all day, you know. So we're taking some of that load off these uh, low frequency transducers, and we're giving that to the sub. Uh, I would say quite comfortably, uh, you know, a wedding with several hundred people, you know, five, six hundred uh, with the 15 over the 18. Uh, you could really bang it out. Yeah. Uh, you could probably even do some school dances. I, I'm, again, I'm a, I'm a tough guy to ask on this because I, I'm all about more rig for the gig, you know. Right. Uh, and so my definition and somebody else's are going to vary a little bit, but uh, I think you could certainly do a, a small school dance with the 15s and the, and, and the 18. Uh, and certainly the 12 over the 15 uh, still is a pretty hard hitting rig. Same high frequency. Uh, again, the 12 is voiced really well. And the 15 sub uh, really hits hard. It does. It really does. It's kind of a fun game to play the 15 and tell people it's the 18 and then tell them. Just kidding. That was actually the 15. Yeah, because so. it, has, it has a lot of kick to it. <laughs> For the guys out there who are doing um, weddings and such, I think, you know, that 15, because there are definitely a size difference. Yeah, it fits in the back seat of a car. Yeah, precisely. So if you're looking for something that's a little smaller, mm -hmm. the 12 and 15 is going to be a great option and still be able to cover your two to 300 person wedding without oh, a yeah. problem. Oh, easily. yeah. Absolutely. Easily. And if you're getting, you know, you've got a few school dances, you're not doing the 500 kids school dances, you're looking at the, the 15 over the 18, definitely mm -hmm. a great option. Absolutely. But You've used it in the real world. I mean, that's I have, and I've, I've been... I've used other 15s over over 18s, and I have had the problem when I'm at that school dance. I've got 200 kids, and I'm pushing it pretty hard. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at uh, some limiting lights going on on the back of it. I can't say that these have have limited. Not that I haven't done it, because I've done it for videos to prove I could do it. Yeah. You know, because it's something that that the protection kicks in with this with this line of speakers. Well, and that's another thing. We this is sort of a real sidebar here. You know me, the ADHD poster child. But uh, we had some uh, we have some EV engineers here who are doing some great um, impromptu classes on gain structure, and people are just amazed. They're saying, "Well, my speakers clip right away," and you know, and then we talk to them about gain structure and explain to them what's coming out of their mixer. And we're saying the speaker is not clipping, the right. amplifier is not clipping, it's a head. the input is clipping because you're sending too high a voltage coming right in. So. Uh, I guarantee you there's been a, a dozen or so people who loved their EV speakers, came in, learned that, and love them even more. Yeah. Because they say, wow, I didn't even realize. I, you know, it's all about headroom and gain structure. And, you know, this, this isn't to point a finger. This is to rather to, to shine a light, uh, you know, and, and em embrace learning. But that's been almost exclusively with ZLX, which kind of points to what we're saying, that mm -hmm. people getting into the industry and they're, they're learning these things. And uh, here you've got an EV senior engineer who literally yesterday was on the phone with the United Nations 
stations, uh, talking to them about their system, uh, hangs up the phone and goes over and shows the DJ how to do game structure on a four hundred dollar <laughs> loudspeaker. So that's you know that's hard to beat. That's what you get at Mobile Beat. I'll get the show this year. Well, we've gone through our good. Yeah. We've gone through our better. Now mm -hmm. we're going to step up to the best. Now, weapons grade. The weapons grade. Now the next ones aren't for the faint of heart. So if you have a no, little, no, but they're also not priced that far out. <laughs> heart palpitations from hearing about awesomeness. This might be a good time for you to just shut the video off, take a couple of deep breaths, and then turn it back on. <laughs> Let's move over to the ETX. We've stepped up. Weapons grade. Weapons grade. And you, and, and you, you may think that Ben is, is throwing that out there as kind of a, a, a humorous statement, but it's not far off. Not really. <laughs> not far and, off. And, and I own one of the EV Pro rigs, which would not be in the portable series, but would be in the, in the tour series. Uh, and so... Uh, and, and as many people know, you know what I'm, who I'm working with with that. Uh, you you see this go out on demos with those other rigs, with the X2 rig like I have and whatnot. EV considers this to be not just in the portable line, but also in the uh, the, the pro line. Yeah. You know that these uh, you'll see these used for uh, small uh, production. You'll use these uh, as uh, side fills, that sort of things on tours. Uh, that we see these things popping up in um, you know that that uh, level above what a DJ would would uh, maybe attempt to do with it uh, yeah and but it's very affordable for uh, for you know a working DJ and uh, and you get that level of product here uh, you know so weapons grade it is we're talking about uh, 18 millimeter birch box so three millimeters thicker than the uh, EKX again more rigid box yep. which it needs because this drivers in here just absolutely pound <laughs> so the box has to be able to take that beating plus of course the beating of being on the road uh, again, a very robust DSP. We can see a larger screen here, a lot more options. We have a multiband parametric on here. We have a delay on here. We have all kinds of fun DSP things built in. Uh, these boxes are also fan cooled. The fan is down right about here and it has airflow uh, through these top and bottom vents. It's actually a, a pulse width modulated uh, fan. It's a very precise digitally controlled fan, if you will. That's just fun to say, really, honestly. Yeah, I was say, that was pretty impressive. I don't yeah. know what it means. Oh, it's <laughs> Sounds good, doesn't it? Uh, there's a flux capacitor in there. Uh, exactly. uh, anyway, and again, you know, uh, uh, you know, kind of a little multi-mixer. Now, here we don't see the uh, RCA inputs. Again, this was designed really for a more pro-level customer. Uh, and if that's you, they're designed for you. Yeah. Uh, just a, a, a very robust uh, box and this is of course what we're hearing again uh, in the main room uh, what uh, Red Foo rocked out with last night uh, what made our phones blow up with as people were uh, doing backflips and handstands for joy <laughs> so uh, and what, for those I don't know you guys might have seen some of the pictures they also took out some of the the can lighting in the ceiling about <laughs> 50, 60 feet from the stage, those cans were like popping out of the ceiling. From we did it in here, just with our little set. Just oh, with, geez. we did it in here in this room. We've removed a few. It's on my Facebook. Go check it out. Uh, in the ETX line, you have uh, you have four different. Uh, oh, excuse me. Be one, two, three. Yeah, four different. Yeah, four. That many. Four. Yeah. Yeah. We only <laughs> three. Three. There are only three in display. They, We've got the we got a 10 inch, yeah. yeah, 10 inch, 12 inch, 15 inch, and then there's a, a 15 inch three way as well. So. And of course, the 15 inch three way are what's really being featured out on the stage above mm -hmm. those big 18 inch subs. Well, and I think it's notable that there's only four of them in there. Yeah. You know, there's only four of them covering a thousand people in there. Uh, and, uh, it, you know, and then of course the 18s, and then they've got some front fills and whatnot just, to, just for coverage. But those things, I mean, to use four e e ETX uh, 35Ps to do a concert for a group like, uh, you know, like uh, Red Foo of LMFAO. That that even evokes skepticism for me because yeah. I do concerts, I do arenas, and I'm going, mm, really? You're going to do that with four? Well, they had 120, uh, with 123 dBC at front of house, uh, which translates to ridiculously loud. Yeah, and it sounded good. Yeah, it sounded very very good, and brought the, <laughs> the roof down literally. <laughs> Absolutely. Ah, good stuff. So, applications, the the production they work can work well. They're gonna for in the DJ world, for the the times when people need to have the large events where they're going to be talking the 500 on up teen yeah. dance, we're we're looking at it really a different world than we 
we would with some of the other the other categories. Yeah, absolutely. Again, it's just you know step up. You know, price and performance. Uh, ETX is the top of EV's portable line, and, and again, as a crossover into their uh, production line, uh, you know, where you're getting in with the, the the other really weapons grade stuff. So if you're doing big school dances, uh, or you just uh, you know really want to uh, go out and rock it with incredible sound, uh, great uh, great output and headroom, ETX is your choice. I mean these. Uh, gosh, th 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 more of these have been sold at this show by owners of the boxes than by anything we would say. People are bringing people in, they're holding their hand, they're pulling them in saying, this is what I have, this is what you have to get. And, and that, that's the tail of the tape right there. So now let's go to the question we've been dealing with on the others. Okay. The failure rate, what have you been hearing? Very few, very few, uh, a couple. You know, and they've yep. been out for three or four years. And again, these get used and used hard. People who buy these, they buy them because they're going to, you know, ride them like a rented mule, yep. you know. And, and uh, you know, to go out in that world and take that kind of abuse, uh, the, the failures have been exceptionally uh, very, very few. Uh, and EV's response to them has been incredible. They, yep. They've addressed any failures very quickly. Yeah, because the, the guys who are buying this, they're not doing 100 dB events. They are pushing yeah. them and, and uh, as Mike talks about these are the ones you basically you just start and push everything up to the max and you just let them go. <laughs> That's right crank it to 11 these actually do go to 11 any Spinal Tap fans out there these actually do go to 11 just keep turning the knob and it'll go to 11 yeah. and yeah they, they go they definitely do some cool stuff Ben great uh, the three lines that get people can check those out you guys have them at the website so they can we go on to the website which is nlfxpro.com that's some, some really cool stuff here. Thank you guys for watching. This is one of our Tuesday Night with Ben Stowe episodes. We're going to be trying to, to get you guys a, a show every once in a while. Ben's schedule, he's running left and I'm running right. We don't see each other as we started to uh, talk about at the beginning of the video. But we definitely need to get back and get a few shows out there because thank you fans for telling us that you missed us. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you what. That's been, uh, it's been heartwarming and heartbreaking all at the same time. Uh, again, I, I fly out today. Uh, I have to go work a, a, a tour show, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm going to miss the last day of Mobile Beat, and, and so that that creates a challenge for filming. Uh, but the, there's been so many, I don't even know the numbers, so many people have come in and said, oh, I, I love your show, hey, I haven't seen one in a while, you know, when are you going to do another show? Thanks so much for the show. Uh, so uh, please know that, that I'm hearing that, and I appreciate it. Uh, John's been very patient, uh, and, uh, you know, we're just, uh, we're going to get our... Uh, schedules together and we'll be back on the air and uh, hopefully with a redesigned set. Uh, so many of you have sent me uh, gifts, uh, Star Wars things and whatnot, uh, uh, and, and I want to honor that and we're going to kind of include those in a bit of a set. So Yeah, that would be very, very uh, cool. Yeah. See, if I, see if I get around to that. But <laughs> Yeah, and if you guys have got some topics you'd like us to discuss or some questions, please put those down in the comment section down below or you can message us on Facebook, what have you. But it's one of those things that as we're thinking of things, you know, we come up with some ideas, but there's questions you have. Have that that we may not even be aware that is a question so mm -hmm. please share that with us either in person but preferably in a message because we don't lose those as often. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we will be able to hopefully uh, be able to address those in an upcoming show so Ben it's great to see you nice and job. now you're headed to an airplane and flying back to Minnesota <laughs> this is John Young with the Disjockey News and Disjockey News TV and Ben Stowe from NLFX Pro thanks for watching good night <laughs>